What's up everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm gonna show you five custom workflow and preference tips that you might not know about in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's open up Premiere Pro and head over to Premiere Pro, Preferences, and just open up General. So in this menu, you might never explore this much, but you can do a lot of little customizations to make your workflow work better for yourself and also help you optimize how you edit your projects. Let's start off with one very useful tip for some people is in the auto save section. You might not know this, but Premiere Pro automatically saves by default of every 15 minutes. And so that can be useful when you're doing some crazy effects and your project accidentally crashes. You don't lose all your memory. You can still open an auto save. But if you want to be on the extra cautious side, you can always lower this to five minutes. So you save every five minutes, every two minutes. I don't know if I'd recommend every two minutes, because it's, it does have a maximum amount of project versions. I just keep it at the default 15, but you know what? I'll set it at 10. I like a little bit more on the cautious side. Tip number two is in the appearance. So you can always change the brightness of the actual program. You might be used to this default dark gray, but if you want a little bit of a lighter look, if this helps you work on clips or you're working on some dark gray clips for some reason and your eyes just can't handle it, then you can add some contrast in this different way. And you can also adjust the little colors of all the menus too if you wanna make things brighter or darker. Another appearance tip you might not know about is the labels. So by default, you might notice that video clips are automatically labeled as blue or iris, and that's by default. So that whenever you drag different types of media in your project, this is what you'll see. This is how you can denote them to yourselves. I like keeping them at the default, but you can always right click and change the label color also for individual clips on the timeline as well as just doing defaults. So, so this time just using the shortcut command comma to open the preferences back up, I can go through and change those back to default. But you can change the appearance and the label defaults as well as change them on the timeline. And another default that you can change when it comes to media is actually in the timeline section. You can adjust the default duration of still images or transition durations. So you notice whenever I drag the JPEG in, it's automatically five seconds long. If I'm working on a project where I know I only want these pictures to be two seconds long, I can make my life easier by making the default two seconds. And also the default transition is 30 frames, and that's when you right click and apply default transition. But if I know I always want it to be a little bit longer for a certain project, or I'm applying a transition over multiple clips, by pressing Command D, you might not know that either. I might want to make that default transition longer in that case. Additionally, if you ever head over to the effects panel and open up the video transitions folder, you can tell their transitions by this little half diamond square. You can change the default transition from being cross dissolve to being any one of these that you want. So let's say for some reason you wanted cube spin to be the default transition that happens, you can right click and set that as the default transition and that'll be the new one for you to work with. Lastly here, another cool one if you head to the media section is this little default media scaling button. So normally it's set to none, but if you choose set to frame size, you can actually make your life a little bit easier when working with a mix of 4K and 1080p footage, for example. When I press OK, let's say we open a 4K sequence. So let's go to File, New, Sequence, and I'll open one of these default red 4K sequences, except I'll drag a 1080p clip into this sequence. So you'll tell me the sequence settings do not match. Do you want to keep the existing settings or change the sequence settings? So I'm going to keep the clip settings, but you notice it still scales it up to the frame size, and it does that right here in the Scale to Frame Size section. You can see this is a 1920 by 1080 clip, but it fills in as normal, whereas normally it would look like this and we could have the option to right click and set or scale it to frame size. So scaling it to frame size kind of just rasterizes it and makes 100% scale the new thing, whereas setting it to frame size just sets it to the frame size and doesn't make that the new 100. So you can always go back to 100 and it doesn't kind of rasterize it at the new size. But that can make your life a lot easier when you're dragging multiple mixtures of clips in and out and you know you want them to fill the frame so you don't have to right click each and every time. So those are just five or so little preferences and what they do. 
but obviously there's so many more preferences and usually I leave most things at default, but there's always certain projects and certain workflows where you're gonna be wanting to do specific things. And if you don't know how to do them, you might wanna check out this preferences menu and it'll allow you to do those certain things that'll make your life easier at times. So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it below, subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so you don't miss any future videos, and go follow me on Instagram at Justin Show to keep in touch with me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.